Julie. Roll call, please. Mayor Mahler? Present. Councilor Gerson? Present. Councilor Trask? Present. Councilor Gorley? Here. <clears throat> Councilor Coleman? Present. Councilor Sanchez? Here. Councilor Richards? Present. Let the record show we have all seven present, no absent this evening for council. At this time, can you do the Microsoft Teams instruction? is joining us this evening for members of the public who wish to who would like to take part in tonight's meeting virtually we have some instruction to help you in case you are new to using microsoft teams to take part you will need to locate the chat bubble icon to participate in the meeting online the chat bubble icon indicated with a yellow error arrow on your screen now may be in the upper right hand corner of your screen or you may need to click on the three dots to see an extended drop down menu if you wish to be recognized by the mayor to speak during the meeting, please choose the bubble icon to enter the meeting chat. It will appear on the right hand side of your screen. In the chat, enter your name, address and phone number, followed by the topic you wish to discuss with the council. If you have signed in, you may be called upon to speak at any point during the meeting, but probably during the agenda item you have entered to speak about. You can choose the hand icon also located in the upper right hand corner to indicate your desire to speak. It's the equivalent of raising your hand. The mayor, acting chairperson or moderator will ask you to speak at the appropriate time. We'll give everyone who may wish to speak tonight a few minutes right now to enter their name, address, phone number, and topic they'd like to address with the council. In the interest of time, speakers should not repeat the points of a previous speaker. Instead, state you agree with their point or disagree with their point. Each speaker will be allotted three minutes. Any extension of that time is at the sole discretion of the mayor or meeting chairperson for the council rules. Those joining by phone will be noted by the moderator for the ma mayor and chair and called to speak at the appropriate time. The fact that the meeting is online does not excuse poor behavior and the mayor does retain the right to have people removed from the meeting as stated in the council rules. Thanks, Christy. Uh, consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion second by roll call, please. Aye. Yes. Yes. Councillor Gorley, I must abstain. I was unable to attend the meeting on the 22nd. Councillor Trask. Yes. Councillor Gerson. Yes. Mayor Muller. Yes. We have six ayes, one abstention, approval of the consent agenda. At this time, we'll start off with a recognition of visitors and hearing petitions, and we have a new officer this evening that's going to be sworn in. And the good news is that tonight we get an opportunity to swear in our next um, newest police officer uh, who's in the audience. And the milestone here is that it is a, um, with this hire and the swearing in, it brings our department up to full staff. And so that's, uh, you know, uh, uh, been a long road to, to walk up and we're finally here. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Cody McPherson. Cody, step on up here. Cody is uh, grew up uh, in Sweet Home and was raised in Sweet Home. He actually uh, left to attend uh, um, Western Oregon University in Monmouth, where he got a degree and a bachelor's degree in business with a focus in accounting. Try not to hold that against him, but <laughs> uh, so he's a numbers guy, which is fantastic. And uh, he lives back in Sweet Home, and we are just ecstatic to have him uh, as our newest member of the department. And so with that, uh, we get the opportunity to swear him in. And so Christy, would you do the honors? Well, many of you know, well, I know that staff knows, but the chief has a degree as an economist. So um, there is a bright future ahead of you, Cody, with the <laughs> yeah. city of Sweet Home. Uh, so if you will raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Cody McPherson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution and laws of the state of Oregon. The Constitution and laws of the state of Oregon. The laws and ordinances of the city of Sweet Home. The laws and ordinances of the city of Sweet Home. And the rules and regulations of the Sweet Home Police Department. And the rules and regulations of the Sweet Home Police Department. 
and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office to which I have been appointed. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office to which I have been appointed. In and for the city of Sweet Home. In and for the city of Sweet Home. According to the law and to the best of my ability. According to the law and the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, yes, we're excited about this opportunity and look for great things from Cody. And I'm not sure if uh, mom and dad are in the audience as well as uh, some other uh, families. So thank you for uh, letting him come to us. And uh, we look forward to great things from him. Well, we do have the opportunity to, if uh, you want some of a family member, or, yeah. Uh, my dad would like to come down and do that. I didn't warn you for this. So. No, no, no. This is a surprise. Somebody needs to get a picture. Oh, he's getting one. People did. Yeah, that looks good. good. Captain City Council McPherson, welcome to uh, the police department and your family to our community. Yeah. Uh, before we go on to our presentation to Oregon Rain, I'll uh, ask, is there anybody who would like to come before council to be heard? Any visitors? Okay. At this time, we'll do the presentation of Oregon Rain. Just real quick, Mr. Mayor and Council Members, uh, as you're aware, Oregon Rain provides support for entrepreneurs in our area. And uh, as part of the agreement, they come and give a presentation on activities within Sweet Home and, and in their, their general operations. So, I don't believe you've met Nate before. Uh, I'll let him introduce himself, but he's uh, been fairly new with Rain uh, last year. Thanks, and Blair didn't tell me I was going to go after a new swearing in. That was that was so cool. That was so cool. That's I mean, a, it, it's all downhill from here. So it's, it's all cool. downhill from here. Um, that is so awesome. Uh, I'm Nathan Conroy. Uh, I grew up in Corvallis from the area. I was a teacher. Um, I have a education company, and for part time, I work for Rain to support other entrepreneurs. Uh, I come for before you tonight just to give a brief quarter two report. Um, I think you have a copy of it, uh, so I just want to highlight a few a few things there and and tell you kind of what's next. So uh, first of all, oh shoot, I pushed the. There we go. Okay, first of all, in the report you'll find just a high level summary of the activities that we're doing. You know, coming out of COVID, we're trying to do quite a few activities. We do those in partnerships with others and also host our own. Um, in the back of your report is a detailed summary of Sweet Home specific activities and entrepreneurs that we're specifically working with. I'll say that Sweet Home is a priority for us to increase that number. We get a lot inbound. Blair sh shares some with me. Um, you'll hopefully see more and more of our flyers up around town. We're shifting our hours to be more outside of work hours. We know a lot of our entrepreneurs have full-time jobs, and so they need us to be available on the weekends and in the evening. So we're doing more and more of that. Thanks. <laughs> Whenever you see me go like this, you can just go ahead. Um, I, I want to say we're really excited that um, we went out and we got additional funding through uh, Business Oregon, and they have a program called the ROI grant. We got additional funding to hire on a second me, uh, although she's she's a lot better in a lot of ways because Raina is a small business owner in Monroe. She owns a brick and mortar building. She's fixing it up herself. Um, and so I think she brings a whole nother perspective when it comes to starting a business that I don't have. And so we're a great pair. She's fully up and running. Um, and that's awesome because there's a lot of activities going on between the eight cities that we cover in Lynn and Benton counties. And so we do a lot of not divide and conquer is probably the wrong way to say it, but we do a lot of a lot of multitasking. And so I really appreciate her uh, being fully on board and, and up and running. Um, by the way, this is a picture of her just to, you know, for proof. This is her. 
Uh, she sent it to me at the next morning, thankfully, but this is her at, you know, 1030 at night, uh, painting the outside of her building. She's restoring a historic building in, in Monroe and making it, um, her business. So, um, definitely one of those entrepreneurs who gets it. Thanks. Couple of highlights. Um, we're not just trying to do events for events sake, but we're trying to be really strategic with the benefits that our events provide. So a couple of things that we're trying to do when we go to events, one is we're trying to amplify stories of local entrepreneurs. When we talk to entrepreneurs, you know, they relate less obviously to the entrepreneurs that you hear about in the national news. We want to amplify the stories of the businesses and entrepreneurs in our community. So that's a big highlight that we're doing. We're also trying to have our events provide tangible benefits to entrepreneurs who attend right then and there. So not just education that you can apply later. A good example of that is that we had an event where we brought in a professional photographer who had a little photo booth and actually took high quality photos of entrepreneurs products so that they could put that up on their website. A lot of our entrepreneurs have websites, but if you just, you know, without a professional photo, it's a lot harder to make sales. Um, and then we're trying to build entrepreneurs community. This is a photo of an event we did where we invited entrepreneurs in to actually put up their displays like they would have at a farmer's market at a fair and then provide each other feedback. We call this entrepreneur show and tell um, and give each other advice on how they can how they can do that even better. Uh, next. And then we had this spring uh, a record breaking accelerator. This one was focused on digital marketing. Um, this is a really popular one that we ran. And I actually reached out to uh, Jennifer Pusio, who's a sweet home resident. I just said, hey, Jennifer, can I'm going before the city council. Can you give me a quote about your time in Rainmaker? Um, and she said, Rainmaker was the equivalent of two college level courses. And I enrolled to glean how to market better in rural communities. Um, she says that rain networking events and marketing classes helped her meet locals and build community. And she's looking forward to rain entrepreneurs, creating even more bridges with local cities and within local cities. Um, so that was really nice of Jennifer to chime in on that next. One thing that we're really trying to do is, is keep momentum going with entrepreneurs. So those who come out of, out of rainmaker, uh, and apologies, everything has to have rain at the start of it. It's a little confusing. Um, but we started a program called Rain Drops. We went out and got money to pay for hours of service from local professionals, bookkeepers, lawyers, marketing people. And so any entrepreneur, any business owner can sign up for free hours with these professionals. And we're seeing them do that. We're really excited about that program. We're two weeks into the Moneymaker program. This one is focused on financial literacy. Um, and so that's going really well. That's often that accelerated came out of entrepreneurs applying for the PPP loans, but are wanting to, but not having their books in order enough in order to qualify. So that's a really timely uh, accelerator. Next. And then two other things I just wanted to highlight. One is that um, we have partnered nationally with an organization that helps entrepreneurs do crowdfunding, but crowdfunding not. <clears throat> You might be familiar. There's a there's a kind of famous example of a cooler. Like if you gave money, then you got this neat cooler. Um, and this is not like that. This is actually entrepreneurs who are crowdfunding from people who want to invest in their company and and have a stake in either a loan that's paid back or in equity in the company. So that is up and going and is something that we're looking to help even more companies in Oregon get involved with. Uh, I'll go ahead. One case study I'd just like to highlight that's in there. Uh, we've been working with uh, Voyez Racing. This is a sweet home company. They are uh, young and yet have found a niche creating custom cages for side-by-sides. And they have customers coming down from Washington State and from all over. Uh, they're bursting at the seams. And so we've been working with them to try to find additional funding and find additional location that they can move and grow into. So that's a super exciting husband, wife, and I think one-year-old team uh, that's making all that happen. So that's really exciting. There's a couple other case studies in there. Uh, helped a chocolate maker in uh, Philomath that we found on Facebook. Somebody said, hey, I need some local goodies to give to somebody. And we saw Maureen's name was mentioned. Turns out she's winning national awards making chocolate in Philomath. And we helped connect her with Business Oregon, and she won a $20,000 grant that we helped her apply for to ramp up her chocolate production Super excited about that and want to replicate that type of success story, obviously, you know, uh, here in Sweet Home and, and around the regions we serve. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and just wrap it up there. 
uh, I'm a teacher, so I'm capable of talking as long as I need to, but I'll, I'll limit myself and, and, and pause there. Um, again, always uh, love to hear more that I can do uh, for Sweet Home. This is a special community to us, and so I welcome your thoughts um, when and, and wherever on how we can do a better job of partnering with you to support our local entrepreneurs. So thank you. Does any council have any questions for Mr. Conroy? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Keep up the good work. I will move on to all business. Um, RCA Mueller WRF Improvements Project Phase One bid posting. Good evening. Well, as Council is well aware, we've been in design for treatment plant upgrades for four years now, and we are finally ready to start building something. Um, it was split into phases due to timelines for funding from the state and permitting schedule with DEQ. Uh, so phase one is now ready to hit the street if Council approves. We have, um, we have phased it and scoped phase one so that we can spend the $7 million allocation from the state of Oregon by next June. And we estimate that the bids are probably going to be about 6.4 million uh, with, we also add a 10% contingency for possible change orders during construction because no project goes exactly according to plan, uh, which would bring it to about 7 million. And then at the next meeting, Next meeting for the uh, pre order. No, oh, we're still sorting out costs. In September, we expect to come to council again to describe some pre purchasing of equipment, which will also be in phase one, but separate from these bid documents. Um, and the reason for doing the pre order of some electrical equi equipment is because of the extensive lead times that are now well over a year um, on such major items as the backup power generator. Uh, so more information will be coming on that soon. We are currently in the scoring on the contractor pre-qualification process. We received packets from three large contractors interested in our project. And we will have the results of the prequals by August 18th. Then we will post the bid packet to close on September 14th. We will then evaluate the bids and come back to council in October to make a decision on awarding the contract. Do you have anything you'd like to add? That would be about the time for the groundbreaking. That would be about the time for the groundbreaking. Last time. That would be about the time for the groundbreaking with the gold or not gold shovels, depending on your preference. Mid-October. Are there any questions? Any questions of council? So, Mr. Mayor, if I may, I don't think I've ever seen a 1400 page agenda first. <laughs> um, secondly, what I did read, which was volume one, because once you got to volume two, I didn't understand any of it, but I really like the accountability in this contract. It's very good accountability for whoever, you know, gets the bid. The other thing I liked is the partnering partnering section and the training and the progress meetings. I think all and the people that are going to be in charge that we're looking at not just city people but the contractors people. It just feels it feels as though it's going it's not only going to be doable, but it's going to be uh, something that we're going to have good control over. Let me put it that way. So I really appreciate it. I know it's a ton of work, but um, I think it addressed questions that we had prior to other contracts. I think this addresses all of those. So I really appreciate all the work that went into it. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Trish, I was mentioning some time ago about wanting to have some sort of commitment to hiring local 
or seeking local sources. <laughs> and I agree with Councillor Gerson that you guys did an excellent effort for this, but I'm wondering if there was something that we can include into the contract for that. Um, that would that would be my most important thing out of all of it. Yes, uh, Preston has some possible language that could be added. We're working on developing or finding some alternate language. So I've had a couple of projects where we have, have used the language. It wasn't exactly what I was thinking I would find when I looked it up in those contract documents. So I reached out to some of our more senior folks and we're trying to track down some language. Um, uh, there is it, there is a question about the level of the requirements. If it's a contracting requirement, you know, there are other potential ramifications like local contracting rules, things like that. If it's a, we encourage you to do this and a register of who we talk to, something along those lines. Um, that's the language I think I can find. So I guess some input on maybe what council would be looking for. So when I have had the opportunity to fill out build, bid packets, not to this magnitude, it was some sort of a goal, not a contractual requirement. Yeah. And then some sort of documentation specifying the activities that they've done to look around and see if anybody local was capable of being some sort of sub. That would be something that was very important to me with the contract of this dollar value in our community. So, so similar to the process, say the city of Portland uses farm minority contracting where you have goals and, and you have to say who you talk to and what events you so want. So I will like that. say that the minority women emerging small business goals are somewhat frustrating to me personally as one of those businesses. But I do know that in our small town, we don't really have a lot of capacity for this type of work. But I do know that we have contractors that would like to have calls from large primes if they had the opportunity to work here locally they would definitely take it so okay that's really important to me Shamir, if i may uh preston when a big company that's going to be doing this thing for us do they usually i think we should do our best to get people locally to be able to do some of this work but do they typically bring their their crew with them and take care of most of that themselves or like electricians and plumbers it, do they usually do that? Is that is that common? So, um, my experience is, contractors are in the business of making money, and mm -hmm. they're going to do whatever's in the best interest of their company to make money. And if they can find local contractors that are less expensive in a rural community that don't cost as much as someone in a metro area, they're already busy. I'd be surprised if they were qualified if they wouldn't use them. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, they need somebody that's not going to produce problems for them and change orders and other things that drive their ability to make money down. So um, I think you will see an effort to do that locally because Sweet Home's just far enough, enough outside of metropolitan areas. Um, when we built the Pendleton wastewater treatment plant, same exact thing. There was preference for local contractors there, and it didn't make sense to bring them out of LeGrand or some of the other bigger cities around Pendleton. So um, ended up getting a local quarry to produce a different rock mix that we needed for the concrete at the treatment plant, things like that. So um, I, I do think you will see contractors make that effort because of the location of Sweet Home, but we can certainly do some more things in the division one specs um, that Councilor Gerson commented on to to help with that process, get it started. So I, I think we can come up with something that'll work. Well, from past experience, they, they, they've always tried to use local, uh, just to just your point, try to use local contractors if that's possible. Prevailing wages and all those are going to be the one of the factors too. But fair point. Yeah. But yep. from past experience, they have. I, I know a lot of local contractors have jumped in a lot of our community projects in the past. Bid in one of the kids. So. Yeah, that it it just wouldn't. I I think you're. I would be surprised if a lot of the dollars that you're spending at the treatment plant don't stay in your community. And I I agree with you that it probably you know you should maximize that. Um. It's also beneficial to your repairs. So, Mr. Mayor, I forgot I have one question. <laughs> forgot I do have a question. Um, I noticed a very strict timeline, and several times it says time is of the essence. I wondered if there's an incentive if the work is completed ahead of time. Is that something that you had thought of? You absolutely, you could do an incentive. It's not, um, I wouldn't call it 
I don't know if it's incentive, what, whatever. Yeah, just as well as you can penalize for being beyond a completion date, you can certainly incentivize completion before it. Um, we did not include that in the contract documents, but there's an easy clause that could be added in the same location as the liquidated damages provision. Um, should you desire to do that? Um, oftentimes we don't, I don't, I don't know why we don't, I've incentivized private projects a lot, but doesn't, not something we've done a lot on public projects that I've been involved in. As well, incentivize, you give a <clears throat> sometimes there's it puts pressure on the cat corners to get done. You want to be yeah. real careful with that. Any other questions of council? Mr. Mayor, um, would this be an appropriate time to ask Preston to read the contract into the record since I'm sure that <laughs> we, we didn't have a chance to read through it in detail? So. Stephen and Trish joined me for, for that. And I thought Blair was the pro. <laughs> I was not prepared. <laughs> So, any other further questions of council? This is an RCA, so I need a directive of council. Mr. Mayor, can I make a motion for option three, move to post the solicitation with the minor revisions, such as commitment to hiring local? I will second that. I have a motion second on the table. By roll call, please. Mayor Mahler? Yes. Councilor Gerson? Yes. Councilor Trask? Yes. Councilor Gorley? Yes. Councilor Coleman? Yes. Councilor Sanchez? Yes. Councilor Richards? Yep. No record. On the record, with seven eyes, no nays, approval of the option three. Uh, the improvement project phase one bid posting. Next up is RCA 9th Avenue Waterline Replacement Project Contract Award. In May, Council approved staff to solicit bids to replace the 9th Avenue water line and repave the street after the water work. We have gotten bids from six contractors. All of them were over the budget. So as promised, we looked at what the individual schedules are and we recommend removing Schedule B, which was 8th Avenue and Alder Street. Um, and only doing Schedule A, which is 9th Avenue and its side streets. The Schedule A total bid would be, have it right here, where did it go? $663,000. And this would leave adequate budget from the ARPA funds for a 15% contingency. Um, I do recommend keeping the contingency because this has a significant amount of paving in the project, which is done on the last day and can affect the price dramatically if there are a few extra loads of asphalt needed. There will be about $290,000 of ARPA funds left over that can be allocated to another project. Uh, after we solicited the bids, we also realized that Schedule A was proposed to include paving Grape Street after the water work. However, since Grape Street is currently a gravel unimproved street, we can't use the ARPA funds for that. So if council would like to have that work done, uh, we would request reallocating overlay funds from the streets budget. It would take about an estimated 35 to $40,000. Uh, with contingency, I would recommend rounding up to 45,000. Or if council so desires, we could just not pave Grape Street. We did give the contractor a deadline through next June so that they have plenty of time to order parts and do the street paving uh, because we presumably by the time the water work is done, we will be heading into winter. So it would most likely need to wait until next spring. Are there any questions? Any questions of council? Mr. Mayor, may I um, recuse myself because there's a potential conflict of interest for me? Do we know it on the record? 
Mr. Mayor. I move that we award the contract for Schedule A to Trench Line Excavation Inc. for $663,865.27 and reallocate 45,000 overlay funds for Grape Street paving improvements. I will second that. Motion second by roll call, please. Councilor Gerson? Yes. Councilor Trask? Yes. Councilor Gorley? Yes. Councilor Coleman? Yes. Councilor Sanchez? Abstaining. Councilor Richards? Yes. Mayor Mahler? Yes. I have six ayes, no nays, with one abstention. Approval of the 9th Street R line replacement. Some contracts that are long term do include some sort of escalation factor. This contract does not. So this contractor is currently locked into these bid prices, and if they wanted to change it, they would have to come to us with a change order request. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, if I might, uh, in answer to that, we also set aside one million dollars for this project, and since we're only going with Schedule A, there are additional ARPA funds available. If the cost um, overruns, we would just come back to the council and request um, an amendment to the contract. Oh, sorry. <laughs> if you're the contractor, please ignore that comment. <laughs> yeah, please disregard that note. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, RCA Council of Governments Recruitment Services IGA amendment. Included in your packet this evening is an amendment to the contract with the Oregon Cascade West Council of Governments for the extended uh, services associated with the extension of the city manager recruitment. Tonight, we're asking for your approval uh, of the extension on that contract. Leave for fifteen hundred dollars. Question of the council. So, Mr. Mayor, I move that we uh, extend the uh, contract with the Council of Governments and the Recruitment Services. I'll second that. I'll second by roll call, please. Councilor Gorley? Yes. Councilor Coleman? Yes. Councilor Sanchez? Yes. Councilor Richards? Yes. Mayor Mahler? Yes. Councilor Gerson? Yes. Councilor Trask? Yes. For record show, we have seven no eyes, no nays, approval of the contract extension of Council of Government's Recruitment Service IGA. Next up, new business request of Council Action, Mahler WRF Special Inspections and Testing Service RFP. West Yost has written a very nice RFP for the wastewater project uh, to get third party special inspection services. This is above and beyond the daily inspections that public work staff will do during construction and the routine building permit inspections by the city's building inspector. Um, these are very specialized inspections that require special equipment such as compaction testing, um, spark testing for epoxy coatings, that sort of thing. And some of them are required by state building code. The proposed RFP will be posted following this meeting if approved and proposals will be due September 8th. The selection will be made by a combination of the contractor's price and qualifications. And we expect that this will come back to council for award in late September or early October prior to construction groundbreaking. Are there any questions? Any questions of council? Council Directive. So moved as recommended. Second. Councilor Richards? Yes. Mayor Mahler? Yes. Councilor Gerson? Yes. Councilor Trask? 
Yes. Councilor Gorley. Yes. Councilor Coleman. Yes. Councilor Sanchez. Yes. That's the record show of seven eyes, no nays, approval of the special inspection and testing services RFP. Um, RC8 North Side Park property line. So as uh, as you may be may be aware, Northside Park, um, it actually is made up of several parcels, which makes any development further development of that park more complicated than it needs to be. It's an area that's been identified um, by the Park and Tree Committee as the, the next area they want to focus on after Sankey Park. Uh, and we have a, a donor who has uh, contributed funds toward a, a dog park being put at at Northside, where there's plenty of space for such a facility. In planning for that, we have realized that we really should combine all the parcels into one. Um, it would make everything a lot simpler. And so uh, because you are the governing body over the property that the city owns, um, your approval for the uh, property line adjustments uh, applications is necessary. Uh, essentially, uh, we're asking you to authorize the city manager to sign the applications, which then allows staff to do the review and uh, make the approvals. So these are um, pretty basic applications. They don't require approval by the Planning Commission. It's just a staff level uh, determination and going through the process of, of um, checking all the boxes to make sure the properties are combined properly. Questions of council. So, Mr. Mayor, I have a question. So, just out of curiosity, Blair, how do we get six different parcels together to be a park? I, I mean, I didn't, I don't quite understand how that happens. So, um, <laughs> property is always really interesting. If you ever buy property, I strongly encourage you to really pay attention during closing at how many parcels the property is made up of because. There are some places in town where there's a property line or where there's several places in town where the property lines run straight through buildings. That is not something that we do right now. Uh, that's something that has been overlooked or not followed in the past, um, but we are trying to rectify that. When the city acquires property, um, we usually acquire it in the shape that it's in, and then any combination of that property would require us to do that action in the in the future. And so, the only guess I can, the only answer I can give you is that whenever the city first acquired that property, it was either given in portions uh, to the city um, or it it was taken all all at once, but it was already in different pieces and we just never got around to combining it. Okay, thank you. I'm going to add on to that. It was to you. You had the rack of all things and tennis court. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the history on that. Yeah. That's how the, the proper lines came about. Right. And we had a similar issue with the water treatment plant, uh, mm -hmm. wastewater treatment plant with uh, all the, pro that just a couple of years ago, I believe we've combined all the property into one. Um, same thing. Uh, we acquired it in several pieces. Any questions of council? Council director. So moved as recommended. Second. Oh, second by roll call, please. <clears throat> Councilor Gorley? Yes. Councilor Coleman? Yes. Councilor Sanchez? Yes. Councilor Richards? Yes. Mayor Mahler? Yes. Councilor Gerson? Yes. Councilor Trask? Yes. Let the record show you have seven eyes, no nays, approval of Northside Park property line adjustment. Uh, we have no uh, ordinance, the first reading of ordinance bills, nothing on the second. We do have a third reading, ordinance bill number four for 2022, ordinance number 1304 by title only. Ordinance bill number four for 2022, ordinance number 1304, sweet home ordinance declaring a ban on psilocybin service centers and the manufacture of psilocybin products. Any questions of council? Any council directive? Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to move this to third reading. Second. Correct. Correction. Uh, this this was third, third reading. reading. Yes. So I was reading. Needs to be to adopt. Yes. Adopt. Motion to approve the adoption of this. So 
have a motion and a second? Councilor Trask. Councilor Gorley. Yes. Councilor Coleman. Yes. Councilor Sanchez. Yes. Councilor Richards. Yes. Mayor Mahler. Yes. Councilor Gerson. Yes. Market shall have seven eyes, no nays. Approval of ordinance bill number four for 2022. Ordinance number 1304. Uh, reports to committees. Any committee reports? Mr. Mayor, um, not a committee report, but just to remind you all, there is um, Oregon's Dino Story at the library right now. And just want to promote that for our library. Mr. Mayor, the Youth Advisory Council will be traveling to Newport on the 25th to visit their YAC. Very good. the officials mayor's report i just want to say thank you to the chief jamboree was in my opinion a success uh, i was done handled very well all indications out there the jamboree turned out well, well we had great attendance i know from the emergency services from the outside it was very quiet which is a good thing and from the inside from all indications it was pretty pretty good too so that was well, well professionally handled, and oh, you had a lot of support from OSP, Lebanon, and so forth. So, good job, Chief. Uh, reminder, and I know uh, Christy will probably bring this up. But, um, reminder for tomorrow at three o'clock, interviews at six o'clock is the meet and greet. Um, need to be here about two forty-five tomorrow, if possible before the interviews. So. Other than that, uh, city manager report. You are correct, Mayor. I would like to congratulate the finalists, uh, final candidates for our city manager recruitment. Congratulations to Blair Larson and Kelsey Young. We look forward to the presentations and getting to know them better tomorrow night uh, and throughout the interview process. Uh, just for the public's sake and for the a reminder to the council, we will start uh, with a staff luncheon. Our department directors will meet with the candidates during the noon hour. Uh, then we will be offering tours to the candidates and our interviews will start at three o'clock with the council and then we'll move into the meet and greet with the community tomorrow night and presentations from each of the candidates. We're really looking forward to that. It has been a very long process and one that we're extremely excited about and looking forward to. We hope that all of you are as well. And so we want to invite the public to join us tomorrow night at 6 p.m. for the meet and greet uh, with the final candidates. Also wanted to advise the council that in your packet tonight is the actual contract with Rural Development Inc. for the leadership program that you approved at the last council agenda. You authorized me to enter into the contract with RDI for the, uh, for the intergenerational program between uh, not only adults, but our youth uh, leaders in the community for a program that would be a year long program in Sweet Home. It was specifically tailored for our community, which is really a special uh, thing that RDI did on our behalf, but it's modeled after uh, a program that um, RDI developed over 25 years ago, uh, which the Ford Family Foundation then marketed and uh, carried throughout many cities across the state of Oregon. It is an I RDI program, but uh, with the intergenerational development, it's something special for our community, and then that's included in your packet as well. We've also put together the materials for the advertisement for the vacant finance director city treasurer position, and those uh, that th that uh, application materials are available online and uh, and we've posted them at various uh, organizations, both the League of Oregon Cities and the Oregon Government Finance Officers Association and Gov Jobs, is it Julie? Uh, so Julie's taking care of all that. We will have a, a first review of applications next uh, a week from now on the 19th on Friday, August 19th to uh, see what the candidate pool looks like and determine whether we want to move forward with interviews right away. As you know, the marketplace is really um, competitive right now. 
And uh, so that if, if there's somebody that's in the pipeline that's a really a quality candidate, we want to move the interview process along so that we don't find ourselves losing them to another community or organization. So we'll take a quick look at that. Uh, and if uh, there's not a large pool or um, if we want to continue to receive those applications, we'll take another look at two weeks later. So that would be a full month's recruitment. And uh, of course, we will be putting together panels just as we have uh, in previous recruitment efforts where we'll have uh, both professionals in the community and uh, colleagues and peers that would serve in finance director roles and other organizations. We'll have council representatives as well as staff on those panels and Julie's putting all of that information together. So look for more information to follow. Mm. That pretty much covers my report for tonight. Uh, this will be my last meeting with the city. Uh, my last day is scheduled to be Monday, August 22nd. That's when my current contract expires. And it's certainly been a pleasure working with all of you uh, and the great staff that we have here at the City of Sweet Home. And I, look, I wish you the best in your recruitment efforts and that you find the manager that you're looking for to move the community forward and and it's just been a great experience, and I want to thank all of you for the opportunity to serve. Well, thank you, Christy, for you. Um, council, I'm to add to that. They asked for an extension until February. That was extended right now today. Days ago, still has not. Now it has been done recently. Right? Now with the consequences of us not getting the kind of thirtieth, they can take away our state funders. State. That's pretty. It or the seven million dollars to get into this is just not acceptable. I think I think that the person needs to make sure that this is how it gets there. Um, if I may, when I first got on the council, I had asked Ray several different times about when the audit was going to be finished or anything, and he told me it was all done. So I don't know. I completely agree with you, Dave. I just don't understand where all this has happened or what has caused all of this. Department Director's reports. Do you like to start? A couple items, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, on last at the last meeting, there was a resolution for the psilocybin ballot title. One of the questions that was asked was if we should add language to the ballot title specifying what the election results were in 2020. Um, we told you that we would look into that and um, and then if you desired the the resolution could be amended later. Uh, I looked it over, talked to, with Robert about it, the city attorney. Ultimately, the conclusion um, he came to and, and, and I as well is that 
put, putting the previous election results in uh, the ballot title would likely be seen as uh, as unfair because it it commits the current public to a decision that the past public made. And so um, our recommendation would be not to adjust it. Uh, and for that reason, we haven't brought a an amended amended resolution before you. If you disagree, of course, um, we will follow your your directive. But that's uh, wanted to report to you on what Robert and I had discovered. Um, I'm aware also that you have expressed interest in a workshop regarding uh, library facility. And so um, wanted to find out what first off if there are, if there's some information I can prepare for you. Uh, for that uh, that you'd like to see and then second on scheduling uh, when when how soon you would like to uh, meet to discuss that topic. Mr. May, if I may, I, I think that I think that we need to do that. I really do. Um, however, I think that maybe we should put off that stuff until we get the new city manager and, and because we need to get whoever that is involved mm -hmm. with all that stuff. And I know I I, I want to get going too. I'm, I'm very I'm not very patient about this stuff. But yeah, I think we uh, that'd be my suggestion. But that, uh, whatever the council wants, I'll, I'll be okay with that. Too. I recommend we wait until we new city manager in place too. Yeah. And and also um, is it is a priority in, in one sense that we do have some pending if pending matters that we need to address regarding that. But I would say well, let's wait until after the city manager. We will bring that back to you at a later time then. Finally, um, the next meeting is scheduled to be the public hearing for our um, our updated development code. Uh, we've brought up this topic before. It's been slow, a long time coming. Um, it unfortunately due to our charter has to be read out loud. Uh, and so what we had talked about before was that your preference would be to handle it all in one meeting, the the adoption of the ordinance. So the public hearing for for the land use application or for the development code can happen at a different meeting than the ordinance being read. And so the public hearing is scheduled for your next regular council meeting. Anytime after that, we can schedule a special meeting for reading that entire thing, um, the computer reading that entire thing for us. And so um, I'd like to understand your preferences regarding scheduling. If there is a day of the week or a particular day that uh, would work for you, because our estimate is that it would be a seven hour meeting. Is the French guy, is the French guy gonna be able to read it for us? I will pick the, I will find the fastest possible voice. <laughs> However, it's still going to take a while. Yeah. You need to speed it, warp speed. As fast as, as our city attorney will allow, <laughs> um, we will play it at that speed, but uh, it is it is something that we need to do. Um, if you have a preference, is there a, a day of the week when you can uh, accommodate that amount of time? Any day, but Friday. Any day but Friday. Yeah, he'd be there. Okay. She doesn't want to be that week. <laughs> and I don't blame her. No, I just need a quorum, is really. <laughs> oh, so just a quorum. Yeah, so. so that means like me and Dave to just leave. Yeah. I think the seniors here should be the ones that leave. No. We need naps every four or five hours, and it just it doesn't work for us. We could make it a potluck if you'd like, and we can just have some food and <laughs> enjoy. It just has to be read. Doesn't say you have to be awake for it. Okay. <laughs> oh, if you'd like, I can just I can put together some possible dates and and um, but I will avoid Fridays. Um, in the interest of of efficient use of staff time, I would like to do it during a a work day if that's at all possible. Um, if not, we can arrange for a Saturday. It's even worse. <laughs> I'll sacrifice and I'll come, but I'm not going to like it. I won't make you like it. <laughs> Nobody said you had to watch it. <laughs> My seven hours of this mess. I'm oh. tough. <laughs> I'm a, after Labor Day, I will be gone to stay at work. And I'm going to be 
be going like a week in October too. Sounds, be before that. sounds like before Labor Day would be best then. Okay. I'll be here. You're gonna have cots, right? Well, <laughs> no comment. We'll put together some options and and um, and give you all a call and make sure that we can have a quorum. Thank you. Sounds good. So, Mr. Mayor, if yeah, I may. Ahead. So, Trish, one more thing. Um, that DEQ letter for, of approval had all the suggestions that were already contained in your document, I should say. So, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, we should actually congratulate West Yost. Preston and his team have labored long and hard at breakneck speed to pull this all together, and we are very pleased with their work. I noticed the same thing, so thank you. Mr. Mayor, may I say something outside of that? I just want to say thank you to Christy for stepping into our city to help in our transition. Um, I have had the pleasure of getting to know you. I, I just am so thankful that you were able to be here to help us. So thank you. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> I nope. should say I will have to say it the the staff it does the does the work and uh, I really compliment the staff that we have here at the city. They're all doing an amazing job to get all of these materials together for you every couple of weeks and keep the city operating uh, smoothly and uh, no manager is successful without their team and it, it really truly is the staff that, that carries the lion's share so. Kudos to them. Thank you. Um, nothing further. We'll go ahead and adjourn at 728.